ABBA were a Swedish pop group formed in Stockholm by Agnetha Faltskog, Björn Ulvius, Benny Andersson, and Annie Frid Lingstad. They became one of the most commercially successful acts in the history of popular music, topping the charts worldwide from 1974 to 1982. ABBA won the Eurovision Song Contest 1974 at the Dome in Brighton, UK, giving Sweden its first triumph in the contest, and are the most successful group to ever take part in the competition. ABBA's record sales figure is uncertain and various estimates range from over 140 to over 500 million sold records. This makes them one of the best-selling music artists. ABBA were the first group from a non-English-speaking country to achieve consistent success in the charts of English-speaking countries, including the UK, Ireland, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, and on a lesser scale, the US. They have a joint record eight consecutive number one albums in the UK. The group also enjoyed significant success in Hispanic American markets, and recorded a collection of their hit songs in Spanish. During the band's active years, Faltskog and Ulvius and Lingstad and Anderson were married. At the height of their popularity, both relationships were suffering strain which ultimately resulted in the collapse of the Ulvius faltskog marriage in 1979 and the anderson lingstad marriage in 1981. These relationship changes were reflected in the group's music, with later compositions featuring more introspective and dark lyrics in contrast to their usual pure pop sound. After ABBA disbanded in December 1982, Anderson and Ulvius achieved success writing music for the stage, while Lingstad and Faltskog pursued solo careers with mixed success. ABBA's music declined in popularity until the purchase of a bass catalogue and record company Polar by Polygram in 1989 enabled the groundwork to be laid for an international reissue of all their original material and a new greatest hits, ABBA Gold, collection in September 1992 which became a worldwide smash. Several films, notably Muriel's Wedding, 1994, and The Adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, 1994, further revived public interest in the group and the spawning of several tribute bands. In 1999, ABBA's music was adapted into the successful musical Mamma Mia, that toured worldwide. A film of the same name, released in 2008, became the highest-grossing film in the United Kingdom that year. ABBA were honored at the 50th anniversary celebration of the Eurovision Song Contest in 2005, when their hit Waterloo was chosen as the best song in the competition's history. The group was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2010. In 2015, their song Dancing Queen was inducted into the Recording Academy's Grammy Hall of Fame. In 2016, the members of ABBA announced an upcoming project in 2017. History 1958-1970, before ABBA Member Origins and Collaboration Benny Andersson became, at age 18, a member of a popular Swedish pop-rock group, the Hep Stars, that performed covers, amongst other things, of international hits. The Hep Stars were known as the Swedish Beatles. They also set up Hep House, their equivalent of Apple Corps. Anderson played the keyboard and eventually started writing original songs for his band, many of which became major hits, including No Response that hit number three in 1965, Sunny Girl, Wedding, and Consolation, all of which hit number one in 1966. Anderson also had a fruitful songwriter collaboration with Lasse Berghagen, with whom he wrote his first Svensk Toppen entry, Sagan O.M. Lilla Sophie, The Story of Little Sophie in 1968. Bjorn Ulvius also began his musical career at 18, as a singer and guitarist, when he fronted the Houdin Annie Singers, a popular Swedish folk on dash, skiffle group. Ulvius started writing English-language songs for his group, and even had a brief solo career alongside. The Houdin Annie Singers and the Hep Stars sometimes crossed paths while touring. In June 1966, Ulvius and Anderson decided to write a song together. Their first attempt was Isn't It Easy to Say, a song later recorded by the Hep Stars. Stig Anderson was the manager of the Houdin Annie Singers and founder of the Polar Music label. He saw potential in the collaboration, and encouraged them to write more. 
the two also began playing occasionally with the others bands on stage and on record, although it was not until 1969 that the pair wrote and produced some of their first real hits together, Ljuva Sextital, Sweet Sixties, recorded by Brita Borg, and the Hep Star's 1969 hits Belemon, Fiddler. Anderson wrote and submitted the song Hedge, Clown for Melodif Stavalen 1969, the national festival to select the Swedish entry to the Eurovision Song Contest. The song tied for first place, but re-voting relegated Anderson's song to second place. On that occasion Anderson briefly met his future spouse, singer Annie Frid Lingstad, who also participated in the contest. A month later, the two had become a couple. As their respective bands began to break up during 1969, Anderson and Ulvius teamed up and recorded their first album together in 1970, called Lika, Happiness, which included original songs sung by both men. Their spouses were often present in the recording studio, and sometimes added backing vocals, Faltzkog even CO wrote a song with the two. Ulvius still occasionally recorded and performed with the Hooten Annie singers until the middle of 1974, and Anderson took part in producing their records. Agnetha Faltzkog sang with a local dance band headed by Bernd Injard who sent a demo recording of the band to Carl Gerhard Lundqvist. The demo tape featured a song written and sung by Agnetha, Jagvar S. A. Carr. Lundqvist was so impressed with her voice that he was convinced she would be a star. After going through considerable effort to locate the singer, he arranged for Agnetha to come to Stockholm and to record two of her own songs. This led to Agnethi at the age of 18 having a number one record in Sweden with a self-composed song, which later went on to sell over 80,000 copies. She was soon noticed by the critics and songwriters as a talented singer-slash-songwriter of Schlager-style songs. Faltzkog's main inspiration in her early years were singers such as Connie Francis. Along with her own compositions, she recorded covers of foreign hits and performed them on tours in Swedish folk parks. Most of her biggest hits were self-composed, which was quite unusual for a female singer in the 1960s. Agnetha released four solo LPS between 1968 and 1971. She had many successful singles in the Swedish charts. During filming of a Swedish TV special in May 1969, Faltzkog met Ulvius, and they married on July 6, 1971. Faltzkog and Ulvius eventually were involved in each other's recording sessions, and soon even Anderson and Lingstad added backing vocals to her third studio album, Som Jag Ar, Az I Am, 1970. In 1972, Faltzkog starred as Mary Magdalene in the original Swedish production of Jesus Christ Superstar and attracted favorable reviews. Between 1967 and 1975, Faltzkog released five studio albums. Annie Frid Frida Lingstad sang from the age of 13 with various dance bands, and worked mainly in a jazz-oriented cabaret style. She also formed her own band, the Annie Frid Four. In the middle of 1967, she won a national talent competition with En Ledig Dag, A Day Off, a Swedish version of the bossa nova song A Day in Portofino, which is included in the Emmy compilation Frida 1967-1972. The first prize was a recording contract with Emmy Sweden and to perform live on the most popular TV shows in the country. This TV performance, amongst many others, is included in the three one-half-hour documentary Frida the DVD. Lingstad released several Schlager-style singles on Emmy without much success. When Benny Anderson started to produce her recordings in 1971, she had her first number one single, Minijan Stad, My Own Town, written by Benny and featuring all the future ABBA members on backing vocals. Lingstad toured and performed regularly in the folk park circuit and made appearances on radio and TV. She met Ulvius briefly in 1963 during a talent contest, and Faltzkog during a TV show in early 1968. Lingstad finally linked up with her future bandmates in 1969. On March 1, 1969, she participated in the Molody Festival, where she met Anderson for the first time. A few weeks later they met again during a concert tour in southern Sweden and they soon became a couple. 
Anderson produced her single Peter Pan in September 1969 and her first collaboration with Benny and Bjorn, as they had written the song. Anderson would then produce Lingstad's debut studio album, Frida, which was released in March 1971. Lingstad also played in several reviews and cabaret shows in Stockholm between 1969 and 1973. After ABBA formed, she recorded another successful album in 1975, Frida Ensem, which included a Swedish rendition of Fernando, a hit on the Swedish radio charts before the English version was released. First live performance and the start of Fest Folket. An attempt at combining their talents occurred in April 1970 when the two couples went on holiday together to the island of Cyprus. What started as singing for fun on the beach ended up as an improvised live performance in front of the United Nations soldiers stationed on the island. Anderson and Ulvius were at this time recording their first album together, Lika, which was to be released in September 1970. Faltzkog and Lingstad added backing vocals on several tracks during June, and the idea of their working together saw them launch a stage act, Fest Folket, which translates from Swedish to mean both party people and engaged couples, on November 1, 1970 in Gothenburg. The cabaret show attracted generally negative reviews, except for the performance of the Anderson and Ulvius hit Hedge, Gamla Man, Hello, Old Man, and Mdash the first Bjorn and Benny recording to feature all four. They also performed solo numbers from respective albums, but the lukewarm reception convinced the foursome to shelve plans for working together for the time being, and each soon concentrated on individual projects again. First record together Hedge, Gamla Man Hedge, Gamla Man, a song about an old Salvation Army soldier, became the quartet's first hit. The record was credited to Bjorn and Benny and reached number 5 on the sales charts and number 1 on Svensk Toppen, staying there for 15 weeks. It was during 1971 that the four artists began working together more, adding vocals to the others' recordings. Faltzkog, Andersen, and Ulvius toured together in May, while Lingstad toured on her own. Frequent recording sessions brought the foursome closer together during the summer. 1970-1973, forming the group. After the 1970 release of Lika, two more singles credited to Bjorn and Benny were released in Sweden, Det Gun Engine Dr. Hashalpa, No Doctor Can Help With That, and Tank O.M. Jordan Vorung, Imagine If The Earth Were Young, with more prominent vocals by Faltzkog and Lingstad and moderate chart success. Faltzkog and Ulvius, now married started performing together with Anderson on a regular basis at the Swedish folk parks in the middle of 1971. Stig Anderson, founder and owner of Polar Music, was determined to break into the mainstream international market with music by Anderson and Ulvius. One day the pair of you will write a song that becomes a worldwide hit, he predicted. Stig Anderson encouraged Ulvius and Anderson to write a song for Melodif Stavalen, and after two rejected entries in 1971, Anderson and Ulvius submitted their new song Sag Det Med and sang, Say It With a Song, for the 1972 contest, choosing newcomer Lena Anderson to perform. The song came in third place, encouraging Stig Anderson, and became a hit in Sweden. The first signs of foreign success came as a surprise, as the Anderson and Ulvius single She's My Kind of Girl was released through Epic Records in Japan in March 1972, giving the duo a top 10 hit. Two more singles were released in Japan, and Carousel, and Carousel in Scandinavia, an earlier version of Merry Go Round, and Love Has Its Ways, a song they wrote with Kichi Morita. First hit is Agnetha, Annie Frid, Benny, and Bjorn. Ulvius and Anderson persevered with their songwriter and experimented with new sounds and vocal arrangements. People Need Love was released in June 1972, featuring guest vocals by the women, who were now given much greater prominence. Stig Anderson released it as a single, credited to Bjorn and Benny, Agnetha, and Annie Frid. The song peaked at number 17 in the Swedish combined single and album charts, enough to convince them they were on to something. The single also became the first record to chart for the quartet in the United States, 
where it peaked at number 114 on the Cashbox Singles Chart and number 117 on the Record World Singles Chart. Labeled as Bjorn and Benny, with Svenska Flicka, it was released there through Playboy Records. However, according to Stig Anderson, People Need Love could have been a much bigger American hit, but a small label like Playboy Records did not have the distribution resources to meet the demand for the single from retailers and radio programmers. The foursome decided to record their first album together in late 1972, and sessions began on September 26, 1972. The women shared lead vocals on Nina, Pretty Ballerina, a top 10 hit in Austria, that day, and their voices in harmony for the first time gave the foursome an idea of the quality of their combined talents. Ring Ring In 1973, the band and their manager Stig Anderson decided to have another try at Melodif Stavalen, this time with the song Ring Ring. The studio sessions were handled by Michael B. Tretto, who experimented with a wall of sound production technique that became the wholly new sound. Stig Anderson arranged an English translation of the lyrics by Neil Sedaka and Phil Cody and they thought this would be a surefire winner. However, on February 10, 1973, the song came third in Melodif Stavalen, thus it never reached the Eurovision Song Contest itself. Nevertheless, the group released their debut studio album, also called Ring Ring. The album did well and the Ring Ring single was a hit in many parts of Europe and also in South Africa. However, Stig Anderson felt that the true breakthrough could only come with a UK or US hit. When Agnetha Faltsko gave birth to her first child in 1973, she was replaced for a short period by Inger Brunden on a trip to West Germany. Official Naming In 1973, Stig Anderson, tired of unwieldy names, started to refer to the group privately and publicly as ABBA. At first, this was a play on words, as ABBA is also the name of a well-known fish canning company in Sweden, and itself an acronym. However, since the fish canners were unknown outside Sweden, Anderson came to believe the name would work in international markets. A competition to find a suitable name for the group was held in a Gothenburg newspaper and it was officially announced in the summer that the group were to be known as ABBA. The group negotiated with the canners for the rights to the name. ABBA is an acronym formed from the first letters of each group member's first name, Agnetha, Bjorn, Benny and Annie Frid. During a promotional photo, Benny flipped his B horizontally for fun, and from 1976 onwards the first B in the logo version of the name was mirror image reversed on the band's promotional material and became the group's registered trademark. The first time ABBA is found written on paper is on a recording session sheet from the Metronome Studio in Stockholm, dated October 16, 1973. This was first written as Bjorn, Benny, Agnetha and Frida, but was subsequently crossed out with ABBA written in large letters on top. Official Logo Their official logo backward B was designed by Rune Soderqvist, who had designed ABBA's record sleeves. The logo first appeared on the French compilation album, Golden Double Album, released in May, and would henceforth be used for all official releases. But the idea for the official logo was made by the German photographer Wolfgang Heilmann on a Dancing Queen shoot for the teenage magazine Bravo. On the photo, the ABBA members held a giant initial letter of his slash her name. After the pictures were made, Heilman found out that one of the men held his letter backwards as in. They discussed it and the members of ABBA liked it. Following their acquisition of the group's catalog, Polygram began using variations of the ABBA logo, using a different font and adding a crown emblem to it in 1992 for the first release of the ABBA Gold, Greatest Hits compilation. When Universal Music purchased Polygram, and, thus, ABBA's label Polar Music International, control of the group's catalogue was returned to Stockholm. Since then, the original logo has been reinstated on all official products. 1973-1976, Breakthrough Eurovision Song Contest 1974 as the group entered the Melodif Stavalen with Ring Ring but failed to qualify as the 1973 Swedish entry, Stig Andersson immediately started planning for the 1974 contest. 
Ulvius, Anderson, and Stig Anderson believed in the possibilities of using the Eurovision Song Contest as a way to make the music business aware of them as songwriters, as well as the band itself. In late 1973, they were invited by Swedish television to contribute a song for the Melodifstivalen 1974 and from a number of new songs, the upbeat song Waterloo was chosen, the group was now inspired by the growing glam rock scene in England. ABBA won their national heats on Swedish television on February 9, 1974, and with this third attempt were far more experienced and better prepared for the Eurovision Song Contest. Winning the 1974 contest on April 6, 1974 gave ABBA the chance to tour Europe and perform on major television shows, thus the band saw the Waterloo single chart in many European countries. Waterloo was ABBA's first number one single in big markets such as the UK and West Germany. In the United States, the song peaked at number six on the Billboard Hot 100 chart, paving the way for their first album and their first trip as a group there. Albeit a short promotional visit, it included their first performance on American television, The Mike Douglas Show. The album Waterloo only peaked at number 145 on the Billboard 200 chart, but received unanimous high praise from the U.S. critics, Los Angeles Times called it a compelling and fascinating debut album that captures the spirit of mainstream pop quite effectively, an immensely enjoyable and pleasant project, while Cream characterized it as a perfect blend of exceptional, lovable compositions. ABBA's follow-up single, Honey, Honey, peaked at number 27 on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100, and was a number two hit in West Germany. However, in the United Kingdom, ABBA's British record label, Epic, decided to re-release a remixed version of Ring Ring instead of Honey, Honey and a cover version of the latter by Sweet Dreams peaked at number 10. Both records debuted on the UK chart within one week of each other. Ring Ring failed to reach the top 30 in the United Kingdom, increasing growing speculation that the group was simply a Eurovision one-hit wonder. Post-Eurovision in November 1974, ABBA embarked on their first European tour, playing dates in Denmark, West Germany and Austria. It was not as successful as the band had hoped, since most of the venues did not sell out. Due to a lack of demand, they were even forced to cancel a few shows, including a sole concert scheduled in Switzerland. The second leg of the tour, which took them through Scandinavia in January 1975, was very different. They played to full houses everywhere and finally got the reception they had aimed for. Live performances continued in the middle of 1975 when ABBA embarked on a 14 open air date tour of Sweden and Finland. Their Stockholm show at the Grana Lund Amusement Park had an estimated audience of 19,200. Bjorn Ulvius later said that if you look at the singles we released straight after Waterloo, we were trying to be more like the suite a semi-glam rock group, which was stupid because we were always a pop group. In late 1974, So Long was released as a single in the United Kingdom but it received no airplay from Radio 1 and failed to chart. In the middle of 1975, ABBA released I Do, I Do, I Do, I Do, I Do, which again received little airplay on Radio 1 but managed to climb the charts, to number 38. Later that year, the release of their self-titled third studio album ABBA and single SOS brought back their chart presence in the UK, where the single hit number 6 and the album peaked at number 13. SOS also became ABBA's second number one single in Germany and their third in Australia. Success was further solidified with Mamma Mia reaching number one in the United Kingdom, Germany and Australia. In the United States, SOS peaked at number 10 on the Record World Top 100 Singles Chart and number 15 on the Billboard Hot 100 Chart, picking up the BMI Award along the way as one of the most played songs on American radio in 1975. The success of the group in the United States had until that time been limited to single releases. By early 1976, the group already had four top 30 singles on the U.S. charts, but the album market proved to be tough to crack. The eponymous ABBA album generated three American hits, but it only peaked at number 165 on the Cashbox album chart and number 174 on the Billboard 200 chart. Opinions were voiced, 
by Cream in particular, that in the US ABBA had endured a very sloppy promotional campaign. Nevertheless, the group enjoyed warm reviews from the American press. Cashbox went as far as saying that there is a recurrent thread of taste and artistry inherent in ABBA's marketing, creativity and presentation that makes it almost embarrassing to critique their efforts, while Cream wrote, SOS is surrounded on this LP by so many good tunes that the mind boggles. In Australia, the airing of the music videos for I Do, I Do, I Do, I Do, I Do and Mamma Mia on the nationally broadcast TV pop show Countdown which premiered in November 1974, saw the band rapidly gain enormous popularity, and Countdown become a key promoter of the group via their distinctive music videos. This started an immense interest for ABBA in Australia, resulting in both the single and album holding down the number one positions on the charts for months. 1976-1981, Superstardom In March 1976, the band released the compilation album Greatest Hits, despite having had only six top 40 hits in the United Kingdom and the United States. Nevertheless, it became their first UK number one album, and also took ABBA into the top 50 on the US album charts for the first time, eventually selling more than a million copies there. At the same time, Germany released a compilation named The Very Best of ABBA also becoming a number one album there whereas the greatest hits compilation followed a few months later to number two on the German charts, despite all similarities with the very best album. Also included on greatest hits was a new single, Fernando, which went to number one in at least 13 countries worldwide, including the United Kingdom, Germany and Australia, and the single went on to sell over 10 and bsp, million copies worldwide. In Australia, the song occupied the top position for 14 weeks, and stayed in the chart for 40 weeks, tying with the Beatles' Hey Jude for longest-running number one, and making Fernando one of the best-selling singles of all time in Australia. That same year, the group received its first international prize, with Fernando being chosen as the best studio recording of 1975. In the United States, Fernando reached the top 10 of the Cashbox Top 100 Singles Chart and number 13 on the Billboard Hot 100. It also topped the Billboard Adult Contemporary Chart, ABBA's first American number one single on any chart. The group's fourth studio album, Arrival, a number one bestseller in Europe and Australia, represented a new level of accomplishment in both songwriter and studio work prompting rave reviews from more rock-oriented UK music weeklies such as Melody Maker and New Musical Express, and mostly appreciative notices from US critics. Hit after hit flowed from Arrival, Money, 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 another number one in Germany and Australia, and Knowing Me, Knowing You, ABBA's sixth consecutive German number one as well as another UK number one. The real sensation was Dancing Queen, not only topping the charts in loyal markets the UK, Germany and Australia, but also reaching number one in the United States. In South Africa, ABBA had astounding success with Fernando, Dancing Queen and Knowing Me, Knowing You being among the top 20 best-selling singles for 1976-77. In 1977, Arrival was nominated for the inaugural Brit Award in the category Best International Album of the Year. By this time ABBA were popular in the United Kingdom, most of Western Europe, Australia and New Zealand. In Frida the DVD, Lingstad explains how she and Faltzkog developed as singers, as ABBA's recordings grew more complex over the years. The band's popularity in the United States would remain on a comparatively smaller scale, and Dancing Queen became the only Billboard Hot 100 number one single ABBA had there, they did, however get three more singles to the number one position on other Billboard charts, including Billboard Adult Contemporary and Hot Dance Club Play. Nevertheless, Arrival finally became a true breakthrough release for ABBA on the US album market where it peaked at number 20 on the Billboard 200 chart and was certified gold by RIAA. European and Australian Tour In January 1977, ABBA embarked on their first major tour. The group's status had changed dramatically and they were clearly regarded as superstars.
They opened their much-anticipated tour in Oslo, Norway, on January 28 and mounted a lavishly produced spectacle that included a few scenes from their self-written mini-operetta The Girl with the Golden Hair. The concert attracted immense media attention from across Europe and Australia. They continued the tour through Western Europe, visiting Gothenburg, Copenhagen, Berlin, Cologne, Amsterdam, Antwerp, Essen, Hanover, and Hamburg and ending with shows in the United Kingdom in Manchester, Birmingham, Glasgow and two sold-out concerts at London's Royal Albert Hall. Tickets for these two shows were available only by mail application and it was later revealed that the box office received 3.5 and nbsp, million requests for tickets, enough to fill the venue 580 times. Along with praise, ABBA turned out to be amazingly successful at reproducing their records, wrote Cream, there were complaints that ABBA performed slickly, but with a zero personality coming across from a total of 16 people on stage, Melody Maker. One of the Royal Albert Hall concerts was filmed as a reference for the filming of the Australian tour for what became ABBA, the movie, though it is not exactly known how much of the concert was filmed. After the European leg of the tour, in March 1977, ABBA played 11 dates in Australia before a total of 160,000 people. The opening concert in Sydney at the Sydney Showground on March 3 to an audience of 20,000 was marred by torrential rain with Lingstad slipping on the wet stage during the concert. However, all four members would later recall this concert as the most memorable of their career. Upon their arrival in Melbourne, a civic reception was held at the Melbourne Town Hall and ABBA appeared on the balcony to greet an enthusiastic crowd of 6,000. In Melbourne, the group played three concerts at the Sydney Meyer Music Bowl with 14,500 at each including the Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Fraser and his family. At the first Melbourne concert, an additional 16,000 people gathered outside the fenced-off area to listen to the concert. In Adelaide, the group performed one concert at West Lakes Football Stadium before 20,000 people, with another 10,000 listening outside. During the first of five concerts in Perth, there was a bomb scare with everyone having to evacuate the entertainment center. The trip was accompanied by mass hysteria and unprecedented media attention, Swedish Abbaster's box office in Down Under Tour, and the media coverage of the quartet rivals that set to cover the upcoming royal tour of Australia, wrote Variety, and is captured on film in ABBA, the movie, directed by Lasse Hallström. The Australian tour and its subsequent ABBA, the movie produced some ABBA lore, as well. Faltzkog's blonde good looks had long made her the band's pin-up girl, a role she disdained. During the Australian tour, she performed in a skin-tight white jumpsuit, causing one Australian newspaper to use the headline Agnetha's Bottom Tops Dull Show. When asked about this at a news conference, she replied, Don't they have bottoms in Australia? In December 1977, ABBA followed up arrival with the more ambitious fifth album ABBA, the album, released to coincide with the debut of ABBA, the movie. Although the album was less well received by UK reviewers, it did spawn more worldwide hits, The Name of the Game and Take a Chance on Me, which both topped the UK charts, and peaked at number 12 and number 3, respectively, on the Billboard Hot 100 chart in the US. Although Take a Chance on Me did not top the American charts, it proved to be ABBA's biggest hit single there, selling more copies than Dancing Queen. The album also included Thank You for the Music, the B-side of Eagle in countries where the latter had been released as a single, and was belatedly released as an A-side single in the United Kingdom and Ireland in 1983. Thank You for the Music has become one of the best-loved and best-known ABBA songs without being released as a single during the group's lifetime. Polar Music Studio Formation By 1978 ABBA were one of the biggest bands in the world. They converted a vacant movie theater into the Polar Music Studio, a state-of-the-art studio in Stockholm. The studio was used by several other bands, notably Genesis Duke and Led Zeppelins and Through the Outdoor were recorded there. During May, the group went to the United States for a promotional campaign, performing alongside Andy Gibb on Olivia Newton-John's TV show. Recording sessions for the single Summer Night City were an uphill struggle, but upon release the song became another hit for the group. 
the track would set the stage for ABBA's foray into disco with their next album. On January 9, 1979, the group performed Chikatita at the Music for UNICEF concert held at the United Nations General Assembly to celebrate UNICEF's Year of the Child. ABBA donated the copyright of this worldwide hit to the UNICEF, see Music for UNICEF concert. The single was released the following week, and reached number one in ten countries. North American and European Tours In mid-January 1979, Ulvius and Falzkog announced they were getting divorced. The news caused interest from the media and led to speculation about the band's future. ABBA assured the press and their fan base they were continuing their work as a group and that the divorce would not affect them. Nonetheless, the media continued to confront them with this in interviews. To escape the media swirl and concentrate on their writing, Anderson and Ulvia secretly traveled to Compass Point Studios in Nassau, Bahamas, where for two weeks they prepared their next album's songs. The group's sixth studio album, Velez Vu, was released in April 1979, the title track of which was recorded at the famous Criteria Studios in Miami, Florida, with the assistance of recording engineer Tom Dowd amongst others. The album topped the charts across Europe and in Japan and Mexico, hit the top 10 in Canada and Australia and the top 20 in the United States. None of the singles from the album reached number one on the UK charts, but Chica Tita, Does Your Mother Know, Angelayas, with Velez Vu, released as a double A side, and I Have a Dream were all UK top five hits. In Canada, I Have a Dream became ABBA's second number one on the RPM Adult Contemporary chart, after Fernando hit the top previously. Also in 1979, the group released their second compilation album, Greatest Hits Volume 2 which featured a brand new track, Gimme. 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 A Man After Midnight, another number three hit in both the UK and Germany. In Russia during the late 1970s, the group was paid in oil commodities because of an embargo on the ruble. On September 13, 1979, ABBA began ABBA, the tour at Northlands Coliseum in Edmonton, Canada, with a full house of 14,000. The voices of the band, Agnetha's high sauciness combined with round, rich lower tones of Annie Frid, were excellent, technically perfect, melodically correct and always in perfect pitch, the soft lower voice of Annie Frid and the high, edgy vocals of Agnetha were stunning, raved Edmonton Journal. During the next four weeks they played a total of 17 sold-out dates, 13 in the United States and 4 in Canada. The last scheduled ABBA concert in the United States in Washington, D.C. was cancelled due to Falzkog's emotional distress suffered during the flight from New York to Boston, when the group's private plane was subjected to extreme weather conditions and was unable to land for an extended period. They appeared at the Boston Music Hall for the performance 90 minutes late. The tour ended with a show in Toronto, Canada at Maple Leaf Gardens before a capacity crowd of 18,000. ABBA plays with surprising power and volume, but although they are loud, they're also clear, which does justice to the signature vocal sound, anyone who's been waiting five years to see ABBA will be well satisfied, wrote Record World. On October 19, 1979, the tour resumed in Western Europe where the band played 23 sold-out gigs, including six sold-out nights at London's Wembley Arena. Progression In March 1980, ABBA travelled to Japan where upon their arrival at Narita International Airport, they were besieged by thousands of fans. The group played 11 concerts to full houses, including six shows at Tokyo's Budokan. This tour was the last on the road adventure of their career. In the middle of 1980, the group released the single The Winner Takes It All, the group's eighth UK chart topper, and their first since 1978. The song is widely misunderstood as being written about Elvius and Falzkog's marital tribulations. Ulvius wrote the lyrics, but has stated they were not about his own divorce, Falzkog has repeatedly stated she was not the loser in their divorce. In the United States, the single peaked at number 8 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart and became ABBA's second Billboard Adult Contemporary number 1. It was also re-recorded by Anderson and Ulvius with a slightly different backing track, by French chanteuse Mireille Mathieu at the end of 1980 and NBSP 
as Bravo 2 as Gagny, with French lyrics by Elaine Bubble. November the same year saw the release of ABBA's seventh album Super Trooper, which reflected a certain change in ABBA's style with more prominent use of synthesizers and increasingly personal lyrics. It set a record for the most pre-orders ever received for a UK album after one million copies were ordered before release. The second single from the album, Super Trooper, also hit number one in the UK, becoming the group's ninth and final UK chart topper. Another track from the Super Trooper album, Lay All Your Love On Me, released in 1981 as a single only in selected territories, managed to top the Billboard Hot Dance Club play chart and peaked at number 7 on the UK singles chart becoming, at the time, the highest ever charting release in UK chart history. Also in 1980, ABBA recorded a compilation of Spanish-language versions of their hits called Gracias por la Musica. This was released in Spanish-speaking countries as well as in Japan and Australia. The album became a major success, and along with the Spanish version of Chica Tita, this signaled the group's breakthrough in Latin America. ABBA Oro, Grandes Éxitos, the Spanish equivalent of ABBA Gold, Greatest Hits, was released in 1999. 1981-1982, Final Album and Performances In January 1981, Ulvius married Lena Kallersjo, and manager Stig Anderson celebrated his 50th birthday with a party. For this occasion, ABBA recorded the track Hova's Vitten, a pun on the Swedish name for Jehovah's Witness and Anderson's birthplace, Hova, as a tribute to him, and released it only on 200 red vinyl copies, to be distributed to the guests attending the party. This single has become a sought-after collectible. In mid-February 1981, Anderson and Lingstad announced they were filing for divorce. Information surfaced that their marriage had been an uphill struggle for years, and Benny had already met another woman, Mona Norklet, whom he married in November 1981. Anderson and Ulvius had songwriter sessions in early 1981, and recording sessions began in mid-March. At the end of April, the group recorded a TV special, Dick Cavett Meets ABBA with the U.S. talk show host Dick Cavett. The Visitors, ABBA's eighth and final studio album, showed a songwriter maturity and depth of feeling distinctly lacking from their earlier recordings but still placing the band squarely in the pop genre, with catchy tunes and harmonies. Although not revealed at the time of its release, the album's title track, according to Ulvius, refers to the secret meetings held against the approval of totalitarian governments in Soviet-dominated states, while other tracks address topics like failed relationships, the threat of war, aging, and loss of innocence. The album's only major single release, One of Us, proved to be the last of ABBA's nine number one singles in Germany, this being in December 1981, and the swan song of their 16 top five singles on the South African chart. One of Us was also ABBA's final top three hit in the UK, reaching number one on some charts, such as Record Mirror. Although it topped the album charts across most of Europe, including Ireland, the UK, and Germany, the Visitors was not as commercially successful as its predecessors, showing a commercial decline in previously loyal markets such as France, Australia, and Japan. A track from the album, When All Is Said and Done, was released as a single in North America, Australia, and New Zealand, and fittingly became ABBA's final top 40 hit in the US, debuting on the US charts on December 31, 1981, while also reaching the US adult contemporary top 10 and number 4 on the RPM Adult Contemporary Chart in Canada. The song's lyrics, as with The Winner Takes It All and One of Us, dealt with the painful experience of separating from a long-term partner, though it looked at the trauma more optimistically. With the now-publicized story of Anderson and Lingstad's divorce, speculation increased of tension within the band. Also released in the United States was the title track of The Visitors, which hit the top 10 on the Billboard Hot Dance Club play chart. Final Recording Sessions In the spring of 1982, songwriter sessions had started and the group came together for more recordings. Plans were not completely clear, but a new album was discussed and the prospect of a small tour suggested. The recording sessions in May and June 1982 were a struggle, and only three songs were eventually recorded, You Owe Me One, 
I am the city and just like that. Anderson and Ulvius were not satisfied with the outcome, so the tapes were shelved and the group took a break for the summer. Back in the studio again in early August, the group had changed plans for the rest of the year, they settled for a Christmas release of a double album compilation of all their past single releases to be named The Singles, The First Ten Years. New songwriter and recording sessions took place, and during October and December, they released the singles The Day Before You Came slash Cassandra and Under Attack slash You Owe Me One, the A-sides of which were included on the compilation album. Neither single made the top 20 in the United Kingdom, though The Day Before You Came became a top 5 hit in many European countries such as Germany, the Netherlands, and Belgium. The album went to number 1 in the UK and Belgium, top 5 in the Netherlands and Germany and top 20 in many other countries. Under Attack the group's final release before disbanding, was a top five hit in the Netherlands and Belgium. I Am The City and Just Like That were left unreleased on the singles, the first ten years for possible inclusion on the next projected studio album, though this never came to fruition. I Am The City was eventually released on the compilation album More Abigold in 1993, while Just Like That has been recycled in new songs with other artists produced by Anderson and Ulvius. A reworked version of the verses ended up in the musical chess. The chorus section of Just Like That was eventually released on a retrospective box set in 1994, as well as in the ABBA Undelete medley featured on disc 9 of the complete studio recordings. Despite a number of requests from fans, Ulvius and Anderson are still refusing to release ABBA's version of Just Like That in its entirety, even though the complete version surfaced on bootlegs. The group travelled to London to promote the singles, the first ten years in the first week of November 1982, appearing on Saturday Superstore and The Late, Late Breakfast Show, and also to West Germany in the second week, to perform on Show Express. On November 19, 1982, ABBA appeared for the last time in Sweden on the TV programme Notch's Maskinen, and on December 11, 1982, they made their last performance ever transmitted to the UK on Noel Edmonds The Late, Late Breakfast Show, through a live link from a TV studio in Stockholm. Final Performances Anderson and Ulvius began collaborating with Tim Rice in early 1983 on writing songs for the musical project Chess, while Faltzkog and Lingstad both concentrated on international solo careers. While Anderson and Ulvius were working on the musical, a further cooperation among the three of them came with the musical Abacadabra that was produced in France for television. It was a children's musical utilizing 14 and NBSP, ABBA songs. Elaine and Daniel Bubble, who wrote Les Miserables, had been in touch with Stig Anderson about the project, and the TV musical was aired over Christmas on French TV and later a Dutch version was also broadcast. Bubble previously also wrote the French lyric for Mireille Matthews' version of The Winner Takes It All. Lingstad, who had recently moved to Paris, participated in the French version, and recorded a single, Belle, a duet with French singer Daniel Balavoin. The song was a cover of ABBA's 1976 instrumental track Arrival. As the single Belle sold well in France, Cameron Mackintosh wanted to stage an English-language version of the show in London, with the French lyrics translated by David Wood and Don Black, Anderson and Ulvius got involved in the project, and contributed with one new song, I Am The Seeker. Abacadabra premiered on December 8, 1983 at the Lyric Hammersmith Theatre in London, to mixed reviews and full houses for eight weeks, closing on January 21, 1984. Lingstad was also involved in this production, recording Bell in English as Time a duet with actor and singer B.A. Robertson, the single sold well, and was produced and recorded by Mike Batt. Annie Frid Lingstad performed I Have a Dream with a children's choir on French television in 1984, solo. All four members made their final public appearance, as four friends more than as ABBA, in January 1986, when they recorded a video of themselves performing an acoustic version of Tyved Shambo, which was the first song written by their manager, Stig Andersson, for a Swedish TV show honoring Andersson on his 55th birthday. The four had not seen each other for more than two years. 
That same year they also performed privately at another friend's 40th birthday, their old tour manager, Clay's A.F. Guy Gerstam. They sang a self-written song titled Der Klein Franz that was later to resurface in chess. Also in 1986, ABBA Live was released, featuring selections of live performances from the group's 1977 and 1979 tours. The four members were guests at the 50th birthday of Garel Hanser in 1999. Hanser was a longtime friend of all four, and also former secretary of Stig Andersson. Honoring Garel, ABBA performed a Swedish birthday song Med en Inkel Tulip and a Capella. Benny Anderson has on several occasions performed old ABBA songs. In June 1992, he and Ulvius appeared with U2 at a Stockholm concert, singing the chorus of Dancing Queen, and a few years later during the final performance of the B&B &B in concert in Stockholm, Anderson joined the cast for an encore at the piano. Anderson frequently adds an ABBA song to the playlist when he performs with his Bayo band. He also played the piano during new recordings of the ABBA songs like An Angel Passing Through My Room with opera singer and Sophie von Otter, and When All Is Said and Done with Sweet Victoria Tolstoy. In 2002, Anderson and Ulvius both performed in a cappella rendition of the first verse of Fernando as they accepted their Ivor Novello Award in London. Lingstad performed and recorded in a cappella version of Dancing Queen with the Swedish group The Real Group in 1993 and also re-recorded I Have a Dream with Swiss singer Dan Daniel in 2003. Permanent Break ABBA has never officially announced the end of the group, but it has long been considered dissolved. Their final public performance together as ABBA was on the British TV programme The Late, Late Breakfast Show, Live from Stockholm, on December 11, 1982. While reminiscing on the The Day Before You Came, Ulvius said, we might have continued for a while longer if that had been a number one. In January 1983, Faltzkog started recording sessions for a solo album, as Lingstad had successfully released her album Something's Going On some months earlier. Ulvius and Anderson, meanwhile, started songwriter sessions for the musical Chess. In interviews at the time, Bjorn and Benny denied the split of ABBA, Who Are We Without Our Ladies? Initials of Bridget Bardot and Lingstad and Faltzko kept claiming in interviews that ABBA would come together for a new album repeatedly during 1983 and 1984. Internal strife between the group and their manager escalated and the band members sold their shares in Polar Music during 1983. Except for a TV appearance in 1986, the foursome did not come together publicly again until they were reunited at the Swedish premiere of the Mamma Mia! movie on July 4, 2008. In an interview with the Sunday Telegraph, following the premiere, Ulvius and Anderson confirmed that there was nothing that could entice them back on stage again. Ulvius said, we will never appear on stage again. There is simply no motivation to regroup. Money is not a factor and we would like people to remember us as we were. Young, exuberant, full of energy and ambition. I remember Robert Plant saying Led Zeppelin were a cover band now because they cover all their own stuff. I think that hit the nail on the head. However, on January 3, 2011, Faltzkog, who has been long considered to be the most reclusive member of the group and a major obstacle to any reunion, raised the possibility of reuniting for a one-off engagement. She admitted that she has not yet brought the idea up to the other three members. In April 2013, she reiterated her hopes for reunion during an interview with Die Zeit, stating, If they ask me, I'll say yes. In a May 2013 interview, Faltzkog, aged 63 at the time, confirmed that an ABBA reunion will never occur, I think we have to accept that it will not happen, because we are too old and each one of us has their own life. Too many years have gone by since we stopped and there's really no meaning in putting us together again. Faltzkog further explained that the band members remained on amenable terms, it's always nice to see each other now and then and to talk a little and to be a little nostalgic. In an April 2014 interview, Faltzkog, when asked about whether the band might reunite for a new recording said, it's difficult to talk about this because then all the news stories will be, ABBA is going to record another song. But as long as we can sing and play, 
then why not? I would love to, but it's up to Bjorn and Benny. 2016 Present, Reunion and Upcoming Project On January 20, 2016, all four original members of ABBA made a public appearance at Mamma Mia The Party in Stockholm. It was the first time all four original members of ABBA had appeared in public together since the Mamma Mia movie premiere eight years earlier. On June 6, 2016, at a big private party at Burns Salonger in Stockholm to celebrate 50 years to the day since Anderson and Ulvius first met, Anderson and Ulvius, and also Faltskog and Lingstad, all took to the stage. Faltskog and Lingstad performed live together, singing the ABBA song the way old friends do. Simon Fuller announced in a statement in October 2016 that the group would be reuniting to work on a new digital entertainment experience. More details on this project are to be announced in 2017. Solo Careers Benny Anderson and Bjorn Ulvius In October 1984, Ulvius and Anderson together with lyricist Tim Rice released the musical concept double album Chess. The singles One Night in Bangkok with vocals by Murray Head and Anders Glenmark, and I Know Him So Well, a duet by Barbara Dixon and Elaine Page, and later also recorded by both Barbara Streisand and Whitney Houston, were both hugely successful. The former reached number one in Australia, Germany, Spain, and Switzerland, number two in Austria, France, and New Zealand, number three in Canada, Norway, Sweden, and the US, as well as reaching the top ten in a few other countries. In May 1986, the musical premiered in London's West End, and ran for almost three years. Chess also opened on Broadway in April 1988, but closed within two months due to bad reviews. In Stockholm, the composers staged Chess på Svenska, Chess in Swedish, in 2003, with some new material, including the musical numbers Han Ar and Man, Han Ar Ett Barn, He's a Man he's a child, and glom mig om du gan, forget me if you can. In 2008, the musical was again revived for a successful staging at London's Royal Albert Hall which was subsequently released on DVD, and then in two successful separate touring productions in the United States and United Kingdom, in 2010. Anderson and Ulvius' next project, Christina Fran of Mala, an epic Swedish musical, premiered in Malmö in southern Sweden in October 1995. The musical ran for five years in Stockholm, and an English version has been in development for some considerable time. It has been reported that a Broadway production is in its earliest stages of pre-production. In the meantime, following some earlier workshops, a full presentation of the English translation of the musical in concert, now with the shortened name of Christina took place to capacity crowds in September 2009 at New York's Carnegie Hall, and in April 2010 at London's Royal Albert Hall, followed by a CD release of the New York recordings. Since 1983, besides Chess and Christina Fran of Mala, Benny Anderson has continued writing songs with Ulvius. The pair produced two English-language pop albums with Swedish duo Gemini in 1985 and 1987. In 1987, Anderson also released his first solo album on his own label, Mono Music, called Klingamina Kloker, Ring My Bells, all new material inspired by Swedish folk music and MSP, and followed it with his second album titled November 1989. During the 1990s, Anderson wrote music for the popular Swedish cabaret quartet and busk singers, giving them two hits, Lassie and Alskamig, Love Me and later produced Shapes, an English-language album by the group's Josephine Nilsson with all new material by Anderson and Ulvius. Anderson has also regularly written music for films, most notably to Roy Anderson's Songs from the Second Floor. In 2001, Anderson formed his own band, Benny Anderson's Orchestra, Bayo, which released three successful albums in 2001, 2004 and 2007. Anderson has the distinction of remaining the longest in the Swedish radio Svensk top in charts, the song Du Ar Min Man, You Are My Man, sung by Helen Sjöholm, spent 278 weeks there between 2004 and 2009. 
Anderson released his third album Bayo 3 in October 2007, of new material with his band Bayo and vocalists Helen Sjöholm and Tommy Korberg, as well as playing to full houses at two of Sweden's largest concert venues in October and November 2007, with an audience of 14,000. Ulvius has not appeared on stage performing music since ABBA, but had a reunion with his CO members of the Houdinani Singers on July 16, 2005 at a music festival in his hometown of Vastervik, singing their 1966 hit Marianne. Anderson and Ulvius have been highly involved in the worldwide productions of the musical Mamma Mia, alongside Lingstad who attends premieres. They were also involved in the production of the successful film version of the musical, which opened in July 2008. Anderson produced the soundtrack utilizing many of the musicians ABBA used on their albums and tours. Anderson made a cameo appearance in the movie as a fisherman piano player in the Dancing Queen scene, while Ulvius is seen as a Greek god playing a lyre during the closing credits. Anderson and Ulvius have continuously been writing new material, most recently the two wrote seven songs for Anderson's Bayo 2011 album O Klang Okja Belted, performed as usual by vocalists Sjöholm, Korberg and Morus. In July 2009, Bayo released their first international release, now named The Benny Anderson Band, with the album The Story of a Heart. The album was a compilation of 14 tracks from Anderson's five Swedish language releases between 1987 and 2007, including five songs now recorded with lyrics by Ulvius in English, and the new title song premiered on BBC 2's Ken Bruce show. A Swedish language version of the title track, Sommer and Du Fick, The Summer You Got, was released as a single in Sweden prior to the English version, with vocals by Helen Sjöholm. In May 2009, Anderson also released a single recorded by the staff at his privately owned Stockholm Hotel Hotel Rival, titled Second Best to None, accompanied by a video showing the staff at work. In 2008, Anderson and Ulvius wrote a song for Swedish singer Sisela Kyle, titled Jag Vil Bli Gammel, I Wanna Grow Old, for her Stockholm stage show Your Days Are Numbered, which was never recorded and released, but did get a TV performance. Ulvius also contributed lyrics to ABBA's 1976 instrumental track Arrival for Sarah Brightman's cover version recorded for her 2008 album Winter Symphony. New English lyrics have also been written for Anderson's 1999 song In and Grine and Gen, then also named Millennium Hymn, with the new title The Silence of the Dawn for Barbara Dixon, performed live, but not yet recorded and released. In 2007, they wrote the new song Han Sam Har Von It Alt, He Who's Won It All, for actor-slash-singer Anders Ekborg. Bjorn wrote English lyrics for two older songs from Benny's solo albums, I Walk With You Mama, Stockholm By Night, 1989, and After The Rain, After Regnet, 1987, for opera singer and Sophie Von Otter, for her Anderson tribute album I Let The Music Speak. Barbara Dixon recorded but not yet released, a Bjorn and Benny song called The Day the Wall Came Tumbling Down, the song eventually was released by Australian Mamma Mia, musical star Anne Wood 201 album of ABBA covers, Divine Discontent. As of October 2012, Bjorn Ulvius has mentioned writing new material with Benny for a Bayo Christmas release, also mentioned as a Bayo box, and Benny is busy writing music for a Swedish-language obscure musical, Hshalp Soaks. Help is Wanted, together with Christina Lund and Lars Rudolfsson, premiering February 8, 2013. Anderson has also written music for a documentary film about Olaf Palma, re-recording the track Sorg March from his last album throughout the film. Agnetha Faltskog and Annie Frid Lingstad Both female members of ABBA pursued solo careers on the international scene after their work with the group. In 1982, Lingstad chose Genesis drummer and vocalist Phil Collins to produce the album Something's Going On and unveiled the hit single and video I Know There's Something Going On in August of that year. The single became a number one hit in France, where it spent five weeks at the top, Belgium, Switzerland, and Costa Rica. The track reached number three in Austria, the Netherlands, Norway, Sweden, and Poland, and was also a top ten hit in Germany, Italy, Finland, South Africa, and Australia. 
The track also proved successful in the USA, peaking at number 13, and spending almost four months on the Billboard Hot 100. Sveriges Television documented this historical event, by filming the whole recording process. The result became a one-hour TV documentary, including interviews with Lingstad, Collins, Ulvius, and Anderson as well as all the musicians. This documentary and the promotion videos from the album are included in Free to the DVD. Lingstad's second solo album after ABBA was called Shine, produced by Steve Lillywhite. Shine was recorded in Paris and released in 1984. Shine was Lingstad's final studio album release for 12 years. It featured Slowly, the last known Anderson Ulvius composition to have been recorded by one of the former female ABBA vocalists to date. The promotion videos and clips for Shine are included in Free to the DVD. In 1980, Agnetha Faltskog recorded New Tandis to St. Jolelgis, Now a Thousand Christmas Candles Are Lit, a Swedish Christmas album along with her seven-year-old daughter Linda. The album was released in 1981. New Tandis to St. Jolelgis, which was Faltskog's first Swedish-language recording for the Polar Music label after having left CBS Kiopol, peaked at number six on the Swedish album chart in January 1982 has been re-released on CD by Polar Music slash Polygram slash Universal Music all through the 1990s and 2000s and is one of the best-selling Swedish Christmas albums of all time. The album name is derived from one of Scandinavia's best-known Christmas carols. In 1983, Faltskog released the solo album Wrap Your Arms Around Me which achieved platinum sales in Sweden. This included the single The Heat Is On, which was a hit all over Europe and Scandinavia. It reached number one in Sweden and Norway and number two in the Netherlands and Belgium. In the United States, Faltskog earned a Billboard Top 30 hit with Can't Shake Loose. In Europe, the single Wrap Your Arms Around Me was another successful hit, topping the charts in Belgium and Denmark, reaching the top five in Sweden, the Netherlands and South Africa, and the top 20 in Germany and France. The album sold 1.2 million copies worldwide. The album was produced by the highly successful producer and songwriter Mike Chapman, also known for his work with The Sweet, Mud, Susie Quattro, Blondie, Pat Benatar and The Neck. It's So Nice to Be Rich was Agnetha's fourth top ten hit in Sweden in 1983. Her duet with Tomas Ledin, Never Again was the first one. Faltskog's second English-language solo album, Eyes of a Woman, was released in March 1985, peaking at number two in Sweden and another platinum seller and performing reasonably well in Europe. The album was produced by Eric Stewart of 10 Cubic Centimeters. The first single from the album was her self-penned I Won't Let You Go. Agnetha's duet with Ola Hackinson The Way You Are was a number one hit in Sweden in 1986 and was awarded double platinum. In early 1987, Agnetha recorded an album Come Fall Jamed Ivar Carousel, Come Ride With Me On My Carousel, with her son Christian. The album contained songs for children and was sung in Swedish. For the album Agnetha recorded duets with her son and with a choir of children. She also recorded a few solo songs. The production was modern and fresh. The single Pa Sondag was much played at the radio and even made the Swedish top 10 unique for a song made for kids to enjoy. Also in November 1987, Faltskog released her third post-ABBA solo album, the Peter Cetera produced I Stand Alone, which also included the Billboard adult contemporary duet with Cetera, I Wasn't the One, Who Said Goodbye, as well as the European charting singles The Last Time and Let It Shine. The album was extremely successful in Sweden, where it spent eight weeks at number one and was awarded double platinum. Shortly after some minor European promotion for the album in early 1988, Faltskog withdrew from public life and halted her music career. In 1996, she released her autobiography, As I Am, and a compilation album featuring her solo hits alongside some ABBA classics. In 2004, she made a successful comeback, when she released the critically acclaimed album My Coloring Book containing 1960s covers who had the most impact on her teenage years as a music contender. It debuted at number one in Sweden, achieving triple platinum status, number six in Germany, 
and number 12 in the UK, winning a silver award, and achieving gold status in Finland. The single If I Thought You'd Ever Change Your Mind, a cover of the Silla Black 1960s song, became Falskog's biggest solo hit in the United Kingdom, reaching number 11. The single peaked at number 2 in Sweden and was a hit throughout Scandinavia and Europe. A further single, When You Walk in the Room, was released but met with less success, only peaking at number 34 in the United Kingdom. In January 2007, she sang a live duet on stage with Swedish singer Tommy Korberg at the after party for the final performance of the musical, Mamma Mia, in Stockholm, at which Benny Anderson and Bjorn Ulvius were also present. In 1992, Lingstad had been asked and chosen to be the chairperson for the environmental organization Artister for Miljön, Artists for the Environment, in Sweden. She became chairperson for this organization from 1992 to 1995. To mark her interests for the environment, she recorded the Julian Lennon song Saltwater and performed it live in Stockholm. She arranged and financed summer camps for poor children in Sweden focusing on environmental and ecological issues. Her environmental work for this organization led up to the decision to record again. The album Jupa Andy Tag, Deep Breaths, was released towards the end of 1996 and became a success in Sweden, where it reached number one. The lyrics for the single from this album, Avon and Blama, Even a Flower, deal with environmental issues. In 2004, Lingstad recorded a song called The Sun Will Shine Again, written especially for her and released with former Deep Purple member John Lord. The couple made several TV performances with this song in Germany. Lingstad lives a relatively low-profile life but occasionally appears at a party or charity function. On August 26, 1992, she married Prince Heinrich Rutzo Royce von Plauen, of the German Royce family. Von Plauen died of lymphoma in 1999 at the age of 49. In addition to losing her husband, Lingstad had also lost her daughter Lizalotti in a car crash a year earlier. On December 5, 2005, Universal released her box set, Frida 4X CD 1X DVD, consisting of the solo albums she recorded for the Polar label and the three-hour documentary Frida the DVD. On this DVD, which covers her entire singing career, the viewer is guided by Lingstad herself through the years from her TV debut in Sweden in 1967 to the TV performances she made in Germany in 2004. Many rare clips are included in the set and each performance is explained by Lingstad herself. The interview with Lingstad was filmed in the Swiss Alps in mid-2005. Lingstad returned to the recording studio in 2010 to record vocals for the Cat Stevens song Morning Has Broken, for Swedish guitarist George Wadenius's October 2010 album Reconnection. The album, which featured other guest vocalists, reached number 17 in the Swedish charts. In May 2013, Falskog released a solo album entitled A Through the Verve Music Label. In a promotional interview, Falskog explained that the album was unplanned and it was after she heard the first three songs that she felt that she had to do this record the album. She also revealed that she completed singing lessons prior to recording A, as she felt a bit rusty in her throat. Falskog stated that she would not be undertaking any tours or live performances in support of the album, explaining, I'm not that young anymore. I don't have the energy to do that, and also I don't want to travel too much. The title of the album was conceived of by the studio production team. A has been very successful, earning her four gold records in UK where it peaked at number six, Australia, Germany and Sweden. In both UK and Australia it was in the top 100 albums of 2013. Resurgence of Public Interest The same year the members of ABBA went their separate ways, the French production of A Tribute Show, a children's TV musical named Abacadabra using 14 ABBA songs, spawned new interest in the group's music. After receiving little attention during the mid to late 1980s, ABBA's music experienced a resurgence in the early 1990s due to the UK synth-pop duo Erasure, who released a cover extended play featuring versions of ABBA songs which topped the charts in 1992. As U2 arrived in Stockholm for a concert in June of that year, 
the band paid homage to ABBA by inviting Bjorn Ulvius and Benny Anderson to join them on stage for a rendition of Dancing Queen, playing guitar and keyboards. September 1992 saw the release of ABBA Gold, Greatest Hits, a new compilation album. The single Dancing Queen received radio airplay in the UK in the middle of 1992 to promote the album. The song returned to the top 20 of the UK singles chart in August that year, this time peaking at number 16. The enormous interest in the ABBA Gold, Greatest Hits compilation saw the release of More ABBA Gold, More ABBA Hits in 1993. In 1994, two Australian cult films caught the attention of the world's media, both focusing on admiration for ABBA, The Adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert and Muriel's Wedding. The same year, Thank You for the Music, a four-disc box set comprising all the group's hits and standout album tracks, was released with the involvement of all four members. By the end of the 20th century, American critic Chuck Klosterman wrote a decade later, it was far more contrarian to hate ABBA than to love them. ABBA were soon recognized and embraced by other acts, Evan Dando of the Lemonheads recorded a cover version of Knowing Me, Knowing You, Sinead O'Connor and Boy's own Stephen Gately have recorded Chica Tita, Tanita Takaram, Blamange, and Stephen Wilson paid tribute to The Day Before You Came. Cliff Richard covered Lay All Your Love On Me, while Dionne Warwick, Peter Cetera, and Celebrity Skin recorded their versions of S.O.S. U.S. alternative rock musician Marshall Crenshaw has also been known to play a version of Knowing Me, Knowing You in concert appearances, while legendary English Latin pop songwriter Richard Daniel Roman has recognized ABBA as a major influence. Swedish metal guitarist Ingu Malmsteen covered Gimme. 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 A Man After Midnight, with slightly altered lyrics. Two different compilation albums of ABBA songs have been released. ABBA, a tribute coincided with the 25th anniversary celebration and featured 17 songs, some of which were recorded especially for this release. Notable tracks include Go West's One of Us, Army of Lovers Ostamanyana, Information Society's Lay All Your Love on Me, Erasure's Take a Chance on Me, with MC Kinky, and Ling's Dad's a cappella duet with the real group of Dancing Queen. A second 12-track album was released in 1999, entitled ABBA Mania, with proceeds going to the youth music charity in England. It featured all new cover versions, notable tracks were by Madness, Money, 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 Culture Club, Voles Vu, The Coors, The Winner Takes It All, Steps, Lay All Your Love On Me, I Know Him So Well and a medley entitled Thank ABBA for the Music performed by several artists and as featured on the Brits Awards that same year. In 1997, an ABBA tribute group was formed, the ABBA Teens, which was subsequently renamed the A-Teens to allow the group some independence. The group's first album, The ABBA Generation, consisting solely of ABBA covers reimagined as 1990s pop songs, was a worldwide success and so were subsequent albums. The group disbanded in 2004 due to a grueling schedule and intentions to go solo. In Sweden, the growing recognition of the legacy of Andersson and Ulvius resulted in the 1998 B&B &B Concerts, a tribute concert, with Swedish singers who had worked with the songwriters through the years, showcasing not only their ABBA years, but hits both before and after ABBA. The concert was a success, and was ultimately released on CD. It later toured Scandinavia and even went to Beijing in the People's Republic of China for two concerts. In 2000, ABBA was reported to have turned down an offer of approximately 1 billion US dollars, 1 billion US dollars, to do a reunion tour consisting of 100 concerts. For the 2004 semi-final of the Eurovision Song Contest, staged in Istanbul 30 years after ABBA had won the contest in Brighton, all four members made cameo appearances in a special comedy video made for the Interval Act, entitled Our Last Video Ever. Other well-known stars such as Rick Mayall, Cher, and Iron Maiden's Eddie also made appearances in the video. It was not included in the official DVD release of the Eurovision contest, but was issued as a separate DVD release, retitled The Last Video at the request of the former ABBA members. In 2005, 
all four members of ABBA appeared at the Stockholm premiere of the musical Mamma Mia. On October 22, 2005, at the 50th anniversary celebration of the Eurovision Song Contest, Waterloo was chosen as the best song in the competition's history. On July 4, 2008, all four ABBA members were reunited at the Swedish premiere of the film Mamma Mia. It was only the second time all of them had appeared together in public since 1986. During the appearance, they re-emphasized that they intended never to officially reunite, citing the opinion of Robert Plant that the reformed Led Zeppelin was more like a cover band of itself than the original band. Ulvius stated that he wanted the band to be remembered as they were during the peak years of their success. The compilation album Abba Gold, Greatest Hits, originally released in 1992, returned to number one in the UK album charts for the fifth time on August 3, 2008. On August 14, 2008, The Mamma Mia! The movie film soundtrack went to number one on the US Billboard charts, ABBA's first US chart-topping album. During the band's heyday the highest album chart position they had ever achieved in America was number 14. In November 2008, all eight studio albums, together with a ninth of rare tracks, was released as the albums. It hit several charts, peaking at number four in Sweden and reaching the top ten in several other European territories. In 2008, Sony Computer Entertainment Europe, in collaboration with Universal Music Group Sweden ABB, released SingStar ABBA on both the PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3 games consoles, as part of the SingStar Music video games. The PS2 version features 20 ABBA songs, while 25 songs feature on the PS3 version. On January 22, 2009, Faltskog and Lingstad appeared together on stage to receive the Swedish Music Award Rockthornen, for a lifetime achievement. In an interview, the two women expressed their gratitude for the honorary award and thanked their fans. On November 25, 2009, PRS for Music announced that the British public voted ABBA as the band they would most like to see reform. On January 27, 2010, ABBA World, a 25-room touring exhibition featuring interactive and audiovisual activities, debuted at Earl's Court Exhibition Centre in London. According to the exhibition's website, ABBA World is approved and fully supported by the band members. Mamma Mia was released as one of the first few non-premium song selections for the online RPG game Bandmaster. On May 17, 2011, Gimme! 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 was added as a non-premium song selection for the Bandmaster Philippines server. On November 15, 2011, Ubisoft released a dancing game called ABBA, You Can Dance for the WII. In January 2012, Universal Music announced the re-release of ABBA's final album The Visitors, featuring a previously unheard track from a twinkling star to a passing angel. A book entitled ABBA, the official photo book was published in early 2014 to mark the 40-year anniversary of the band's Eurovision victory. The book reveals that part of the reason for the band's outrageous costumes were the Swedish tax laws at the time that allowed the cost of brazen outfits that were not suitable for public display to be deducted against tax. Artistry Recording Process ABBA were perfectionists in the studio, working on tracks until they got them right rather than leaving them to come back later on. The band created a basic rhythm track with a drummer, guitarist, and bass player, and overlaid other arrangements and instruments. Vocals were then added, and orchestra overdubs were usually left until last. Agnethy and Frida contributed ideas at the studio stage. Benny and Bjorn played them in the backing tracks and they made comments and suggestions. According to Agnetha, she and Frida had the final say in how the lyrics were shaped. When we gather around the piano to get our voices tuned up, we often come up with things we can use in the backing vocals. After vocals and overdubs were done, the band took up to five days to mix a song. Fashion, style, videos, advertising campaigns. ABBA was widely noted for the colorful and trend-setting costumes its members wore. The reason for the wild costumes was Swedish tax law. The clothes could be deductible only if they could not be worn other than for performances. 
choreography by Graham Tainton also contributed to their performance style. The videos that accompanied some of the band's biggest hits are often cited as being among the earliest examples of the genre. Most of ABBA's videos, and ABBA, the movie, were directed by Lasse Hallström, who would later direct the films My Life as a Dog, The Cider House Rules and Chocolate. ABBA made videos because their songs were hits in many different countries and personal appearances were not always possible. This was also done in an effort to minimize traveling, particularly to countries that would have required extremely long flights. Faltzkog and Ulvius had two young children and Faltzkog, who was also afraid of flying, was very reluctant to leave her children for such a long time. ABBA's manager, Stig Anderson, realized the potential of showing a simple video clip on television to publicize a single or album, thereby allowing easier and quicker exposure than a concert tour. Some of these videos became classics because of the 1970s era costumes and early video effects, such as the grouping of the band members in different combinations of pairs, overlapping one singer's profile with the other's full face, and the contrasting of one member against another. In 1976, ABBA participated in a high-profile advertising campaign by the Matsushita Electric Industrial, today's Panasonic, which was designed to promote the brand National. This campaign was designed initially for Australia, where National was still the primary brand used by Matsushita, who had not introduced the Panasonic brand to Australia yet despite its widespread use in other parts of the world. However, the campaign was also aired in Japan. Five commercials, each approximately one minute long, were produced, each using the national song sung by ABBA, which used the melody and instrumental arrangement of Fernando, adapted with new lyrics promoting national, and working in several slogans used by national in their advertising. Political Position In September 2010, band members Andersen and Ulvius criticized the right-wing Danish People's Party, DF, for using the ABBA song Mamma Mia, with modified lyrics, at rallies. The band threatened to file a lawsuit against the DF, saying they never allowed their music to be used politically and that they had absolutely no interest in supporting the party. Their record label Universal Music later said that no legal action would be taken because an agreement had been reached. Success in the United States During their active career, from 1972 to 1982, ABBA placed 20 singles on the Billboard Hot 100, 14 of which made the Top 40, 13 on the Cashbox Top 100, and 10 of which made the Top 20 on both charts. A total of four of those singles reached the Top 10, including Dancing Queen which reached number one in April 1977. While Fernando and SOS did not break the Top 10 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart, reaching number 13 and 15 respectively, they did reach the top 10 on Cashbox, Fernando, and Record World, SOS, charts. Both Dancing Queen and Take a Chance on Me were certified gold by the Recording Industry Association of America for sales of over 1 million copies each. The group also had 12 top 20 singles on the Billboard Adult Contemporary chart with two of them, Fernando and The Winner Takes It All, reaching number one. Lay All Your Love On Me was ABBA's fourth number one single on a Billboard chart, topping the Hot Dance Club Play chart. The singles Dancing Queen and Take a Chance On Me were certified gold, more than one and mps, million copies sold, by the RIAA. Nine ABBA albums made their way into the top half of the Billboard 200 album chart, with seven of them reaching the top 50 and four reaching the top 20. ABBA the album was the highest charting album of the group's career, peaking at number 14. Five albums received RIAA Gold certification, more than 500,000 copies sold, while three acquired platinum status, selling more than 1 million copies. In 1993, the ABBA Gold, Greatest Hits collection was released in the United States and has since become a seven-time platinum bestseller. It climbed to number one on the Billboard Top Pop Catalog Albums Chart and also peaked at number 11 on Billboard Comprehensive Albums Chart. On March 15, 2010, ABBA were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame by Bee Gees members Barry Gibb and Robin Gibb. The ceremony was held at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York City.
the group was represented by Annie Frid Lingstad and Benny Anderson. The 18th of February is ABBA Day in the United Kingdom, during this event many Swedish nationals are known to flock to the UK to celebrate the band and their accomplishments.